Hello friends, welcome. Friend, yesterday I saw this article which talks about BSNL to deploy, BSNL to deploy additional 1 lakh towers for 4G network, says Chandrasekhar, our Minister of States, right? And this article talks about, you know, how a BSNL is going to become more empowering in 4G with time as, as we move forward in time. And people are excited about BSNL because if BSNL has a very empowering 4G network in our country, it is going to be good for the uh, consumers of our country because they will now have an option to move towards BSNL if the other mobile service providers start to raise their prices because people are not very happy when the prices of their services have been increase the mobile services prices have increased so they have an option to move to bsnl and therefore everybody is looking towards bsnl to have a pan india 4g coverage now friends i thought that this is the right time to evaluate bsnl's current 4g coverage now viewers who are watching this video find this a little interesting and confusing also means how do i evaluate bsnl's current 4g coverage what method i should adopt now friends what I, after having a lot of thought as to what should I do in order to evaluate how far BSNL has moved with their effort and endeavor to deploy 4G network, because all these are future talk. We all know that BSNL has been working since last almost like two years to deploy 4G network in our country. And a lot of talk has been made and a lot of discussion has already happened and people have st already started experiencing BSNL's 4G services. There have been some positive uh, experience, there have been some negative experience also. Right. So it is important to measure the 4G coverage of BSNL as of date compared to their legacy network, which is 2G and 3G. Why this measurement is important? 4G compared to their legacy network, 2G and 3G. Because it is understood that before BSNL started deploying 4G services, they actually had to start from zero because there was no 4G. But 2G and 3G already existed. And that network, these two networks, 2G and 3G, BSNL took a lot of time to deploy and it reached a level of saturation. And after that, BSNL started working on 4G. So if we develop a method where we can compare BSNL's existing 4G network density coverage compared to their earlier 2G and 3G, which we assume to have reached a level of saturation, that will give us a fair amount of perception as to how far BSNL has reached in their endeavor to roll out 4G, right? Then only all these claims in future can be perceived and understood means we are already there and we have to move up to the level of saturation, which is 3G and 4G, and then we move beyond. That's how we should look at it, right? But it is important to evaluate where we stand. But how do we evaluate, friends? So friends, I have developed a method. And that method may not be 100% accurate, but it is kind of quite scientific. And let me show you how I have, I'm doing to do it. Fortunately, friends, BSNL has published after a long period of hit and trial method, a stable mapping site. This mapping site was a effort of TRAI, a directive of TRAI to all the service providers to put out their network coverage map circle by circle basis so that the consumers who are buying their services are informed whether there is a coverage in their place where they reside or not. So BSNL has also done that. Other operators did it much earlier. BSNL took some time, but now they have a stable map. So what you can do is you can go and select a state. Once you select a state, you can select a type of network 2G. When you click, you'll get 2G coverage. You'll get, if you, if you just uncheck 2G, you get 3G, you'll get 3G coverage. Uh, and then if you click 4G, you'll get 4G coverage for Andhra Pradesh. Now, by selecting each and every technology and then looking at it on a standalone basis does not give you a very good understanding because you are not able to see all these four technologies simultaneously in the same view, in the same screen to able to compare what coverage exists 
for a particular technology because it has to be one by one. So what I did, friends, I did a lot of effort in the morning and took snapshot of each and every coverage map for a particular technology for state and then put it in a slide like this. I'm going to show you. So this is the slide deck I have created where you can see that the coverage map of each and every state has been picked here and laid one top of other. Let me just change the color of my pen. Yeah. So you can see here that they have been laid in on top, you know, side by side. So you can see this is 2G, this is 3G and this is 4G. Like that, I have done it for every state, which I can very clearly see in the by the selection menu of this map. So if when you go in this map and you select from here, you see all the states are available here, right? In the drop down menu. So I went and selected each and every state and then I checked on and off and then I created this slide deck, right? You can see here. After having created this slide deck, I had to do another level of effort or because by looking at this slide deck, Still, it does not give me a scientific method to compare because I need an aggregated pan-India number. That is what, what is that I'm looking at. How do I do that, right? So what I've done, friends, is every state, I actually took the technology which has got maximum coverage. For example, 2G here in Andhra Pradesh. Is coverage is good. So I put a score of 100 for 2G. Okay, can you see this? This is 2G. And this is 100, right? This is the reference score. Then I looked at 3G. Now, if you look at the 3G map, visually, if you see, it appears that it is 60% compared to this. It, it may be 50%, 70% people will have different perception, right? So since I'm doing it visually, I have just put a score by looking at how it looks compared to 2G. So I, I put a number here, 60. Then 4G is pretty weak in Andhra Pradesh. So I put a score of 10. Now, this may vary 11, 12. I tried chat GPT to come out with accurate score, but it failed. But therefore, I'm doing it visually. So like that, if you see every circle, every state, I have put a score here. You see, Assam here, 2G is 100, 3G is fair, 4G is good. So I'll go one by one. And then I'm going to tell you what is the next step that I have done. For example, Bihar, you see, 2G is 70 because 4G here looks very, very good. 2G is 70. And 3G is fair, so 40. Then I go to Chhattisgarh. You see, 2G is best in Chhattisgarh, 100. 3G is very poor, so I put a score of 30. 4G is fair, you see, poor score of score of 40. So you can pause your pause this video and you can basically check whether my uh, you know perception or the score that I put is correct or not, right? You can change the score because I'm going to give you the method that I'm going to uh, going to use in order to aggregate a pan India number, right? Later. But look at these uh, these uh, states so as to get a flavor as to how I have given the score and what is it looks like, you know, visually. It's important to look at it visually, right? So Gujarat, you see, 2G is best. 3G looks like it is a little bit of gaps here and there. It, it is fair. <coughs> Sorry, friends. And 4G looks very poor. So I put a score of 40. 3G I've given a score of 80. Similarly, Haryana, you see, 2G is best, 100. 3G is fair, 40, and 4G is good, not at par with 2G, because there are some holes here, gaps here. I have given it a score of 90. Then I have Himachal Pradesh, if you see, 2G is best, 100, 3G is fair, 50, and 4G is also very, very good, because if you compare 4G with 2G, it's kind of, you know, neck to neck, right, Himachal Pradesh. Then JNK, 2G is the reference point, therefore 100, 3G is fair, you can see here by pausing the video 90 and 4G is poor. So I have given a score of 40 here, right? And then by looking at Jharkhand, you see 2G is, is not as good as 4G because 4G looks to me very good. So I have given a reference score of 100 for 4G and 2G is 70 and 3G is 50, right? Then Karnataka, 2G is the reference I have used, 100. 3G is fair, so 50. And then 4G is not at par with that of 100. I given a 75. It can be 80, 90, you know, depends upon, you know, I put 75 because I find, you know, this is more dense compared to this, right? Then if you look at Kerala, 2G is 100. 3G because there are some gaps here. So I put it fair, 80. 
फोर जी इज एज गुड एज एज टू जी देव फोर आई पुट ए स्कोर ऑफ हंड्रेड हियर राइट केरला कोलकाता Kolkata, I just leave it because I have not used Kolkata to measure because part of West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, two G is hundred, three G is seventy, four G is hundred because it looks like almost similar because Madhya Pradesh has a lot of forest therefore and it's a uh, you know more it's not as dense as it should be normally, but uh, looks like that you know this two G coverage is also pretty thin but four G is kind of mapping app uh, you know carpet to carpet with three G. So with with two G, then Maharashtra, Maharashtra two G is good, three G is fair forty because if you see there are a lot of gaps here and four G looks to me you know at par with uh, that of 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 Maharashtra. But here is a catch here because Mumbai they have no no network and Mumbai is a very strong economic zone and I'll tell you why I am use it forty because the density of of network in Mumbai. Will drive that how much value that you will be able to generate in Maharashtra. That's why this number has been put as forty because I am assuming that Mumbai is absent. Therefore, this score has not been put at hundred. Uh, It has been put at forty. Similarly, northeast there is no two G. I do not know why in the map does not show two G. Three uh, G is hundred and four G is also has put as hundred. Then Odisha, two. If you see four G is the best hundred. 3G is fair 40 and 2G is good is 80. Then we have Punjab. Best is 2G 100. 3G is poor 40 and 4G is fair because they see lot of lot of gaps here. Therefore 80. And then we have Rajasthan. Rajasthan there is no data of 4G in the map and therefore I put a score of 10. This can enhance because because I can't see any data in the map as Maharashtra. So 2G is 100. 3G is fair 70. Then we have got Tamil Nadu. You know, two G is hundred, three G is eighty, and four G is also as good as two G. But though there are certain gap, but I have just given it to four G, so it is hundred, right? Then we have Telangana. Two G is hundred. Telangana of three G is fair fifty, and four G is very very poor twenty. Then Uttar Pradesh also there is no data. They have put a score of ten. It can go to eighty, ninety, depending because I don't see data, so I can't evaluate. Two G is hundred, three G is fair fifty, right? Then we have got Uttarakhand. Two G is hundred. Three G is poor sixty, and then four G is good hundred. Then we have got West Bengal. So two G is hundred. Three G is fair seventy. Four G is fair seventy. Right? You can pause the video and see whether my scores look, you know, okay or not. And you need to make some changes here and there. It it all depends upon the individual perception. Now once I have this data of scoring which I put here, so I'll just uh, remove this. I'll just put a. I'll go to data and then I'll just group this and I'll take this out of the frame. So here, what I have done is I put the state, right? Or you can say circle here, and the GDP of the circle in billion rupees billion here, and I have taken the percentage share of the GDP of that particular circle. Maharashtra includes Mumbai, so this is the total rupees billion. And when you take do a percentage share of GDP, you can calculate the percentage because what happens is this divided by this, right? It will thirteen point three per three percent. Like that, you divide each and every GDP number with the total number, and you see what is the percentage distribution. All adds up to hundred percent. After you have done that, you have you put the two G score here, you put the three G score here, and you put the four G score here, right? And you remember UP and Rajasthan. I put a ten score. If the scores go high, then these numbers are going to change. Then what I do, friends, is I do a sum product. This look at this. So what I am doing here, I am basically doing a sum product of this and this, and creating an aggregated number here, right? So if you look at this, this number comes out for two G. It comes out to be ninety three point nine three. Right for BSNL. Now, as far as 3G is concerned, this number comes out to be 60.42, and for 4G, this number comes out to be 57.07. Now, if I change UP, let's say make UP 50. I don't know whether UP there is network or not, right? Or make it let's say 80. Maybe there is network, right? I'm going to show you. This now goes to 62.95, and if I increase Rajasthan to make let's make it 50, this number goes to 64.97, right? Because there are no nothing in the map, maybe ten, but I have used or maybe zero. I don't know, right? So, but I am just speculating. Maybe they forgot to upload data in the map. 
So if you look at, if you consider this as 100%, 2G as 100%, then 4G is, if you assume UP is 80 and Rajasthan is 50, this is just 69%. If you assume Rajasthan as let's say 20, this is 68%. So it is still 32% more you have to go in order to reach the coverage of 2G, which is the reference coverage. You got it how I did it? Because you have to do it in this way, otherwise you can't come out with an aggregated number. So we are still 30%, at least 30% more coverage to, to, to create, to go, uh, you know, forward to at least reach the 2G level, which was the level of saturation or the level of stability of BSL network before they started working on their uh, 4G network. Now friends, and 3G is 64%. Now friends, the problem here is that this 2G network coverage at the time when BSNL started working in 3G had a total tower, tower account of 70K, right? 70K towers, right? Not even 1 lakh. I really don't know how many towers BSNL has as of date, right? So what I'm assuming is that when you look at Vodafone Idea, they are talking about 1.8 lakh towers. If you look at you know, Bharti, you can look at Jio, they are way ahead. Bharti may have around 2.5 lakh towers, Reliance may have around 3 lakh or 3.5 lakh towers. So BSNL's 2G coverage at that point when they started working in with 3G was grossly insufficient compared to their competitors. So 4G is 68% of the 2G. So it is still not at the level of their 2G coverage friends when they started working two years back. So they have to still cover 30% before all these claims which the minister is making that BSNL to deploy additional 1 lakh towers of 4G deployment. So the point which I'm trying to say friends is that we have already spent one and a half to two years. We have still not reached, we have not still reached the level of their 2G coverage, which was considered to be a point of saturation before you started working on 2G. We still have to go another 32% to able to match. Then we have to reach, you know, 1 lakh. And then we have to reach 2 lakh. So how much time it will take? We have already spent one and a half to two years. Will it take one year? Will it take two years, three years? That is a question that we have to ask because whenever we make those claims, this is the scientific way of measuring your coverage because there is no other way I could have done it. I have to assume that these maps which BSNL has published is with, filled with accurate data. Though there are certain gaps which is there, which I can see UP, there is nothing I can see in data, right? Rajasthan, I can't see anything in data. But wherever data is there, this has to be an accurate data, right? Because this is, a, this is an updated map. So if this is an updated map and if this tells us that we have reached only 68%, assuming that 80% in UP and 20% in Rajasthan, I don't know, these numbers may be 0, 0 or 10, I don't know. So it is still a, way, in a long way to go. It's a string along it. This is what I wanted to tell you friends in this video. That's all. Because I thought of doing it in a, in a structural scientific manner to give a flavor to all the viewers that how far BSNL has reached in their coverage. Because their 2G coverage was also very, very grossly insufficient. And you still have to reach, go another 30%, right? In order to match your 2G coverage. And then you have to go further, right? From there, right? You are running, you are, you are already late by so many, you know, years. And still you have not covered and you have not reached your 2G coverage level. So you have to still go further. So still a lot of hard work has to be done, friends, in order for BSNL to be successful and have a comparable network which can challenge the market leaders, friends. That's all I wanted to talk to you in this video. I wanted to create a scientific structure so as to tell my story. Otherwise, it makes no sense, right? Thank you, friends, for your time. I hope that you like this video. And uh, you find this very useful and interesting. And thanks for listening till the end. And I'll come back with a new video and a new topic next time. Thank you very much.